everybody. It's Tyler here at the Indiana District Championships, checking in team number 3940. Cyber Tuesday has been having an absolutely phenomenal season. They had a win just a couple weeks ago. Also entering Inspiration Award at one of their events as well, too. So congratulations on that awesome success. Take a look at 3940, what they have to offer here. I really like their overall transfer that they're doing, how they're acquiring uh, both cubes and cones is great. Of course, we talk about their arm and some driver feedback. Let's learn more about Cybertooth coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Andy Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Rebox competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Andy Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit andymark.com for all your educational robotics needs. If you're attending championships, come to the Fun and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the Fun and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the Fun or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. All right, uh, let me check in here. All right, whenever you are ready, you can go. Hi, we are Cybertooth from Northwestern High School in Kokomo, Indiana. This is our robot, Rattlesnake. It has 101 hours of on time, and we have two main mechanisms. So my name is Jana Wilson, and I'm the team captain uh, and driver. We have Miranda Padfield here to talk about our LEDs, and she's our operator. And we have Camden, our safety captain, to talk about our intake, and David, our pit captain, to talk about our arm. So Camden, let's start off on your intake here, talking about what's going on to you. Now, I watched you on the field, and I really like how Cybertooth is handling acquisition this year, both from Thank the you. floor and also from the station as well. So talk to me about how this intake works and how it's working out for your team. All right. So the intake, it's got white compliant wheels that are custom made so that it's able to grip the cones, and this will grip the cones also and the cubes. And if you let it go out, for, that's for the uh, when it's up against a single uh, station, it will drop down into it. And if you spin it, it'll be spinning like that to collect it. And then that will be down the, uh, for the cubes, and it will blink blue to indicate that it's going to pick up a cube from the single station. And it will, uh, from over here, when it's going and driving towards the cones or cubes, then it will end up picking it up off the ground and will spin to pick it up to get it. and it's chain uh, driven towards the outside and it's pneumatic components to get it to go up and down. Let me ask you, on, on your intake here, when you were approaching the game, uh, how did you figure out you wanted to go with this type of like floor intake for your robot? Like, What was some of the thought process behind the design? So we thought about, because there's not just two ways that, like there's not just two game pieces, because there's a cube, which as one, and then there's a cone straight up, and then there's a cube laying down, or a cone laying down. And after that, we thought about how we should do it to get it to go, like, the easiest way to pick it up from multiple perspectives. So here's the cone. And then here's the cube. David, I think that's a great transition to go into your arm and talk about uh, what's this gone through. I'd love to hear a little bit about this handoff, how that's working out, uh, and then the entire superstructure of it as well, too. It's so well designed. Yes, okay. Thank you. So uh, the big thing with this arm is that it comes through the robot instead of scoring on the exact same side. One of the big reasons why we did that is because we have tank drive. Um, we run an Antimark drop center eight-wheel drive drivetrain, and this arm comes through. It picks up. It, the gripper opens. It picks up the game piece that is presumed to be right there, and it comes all the way through to four different set points. Co cone high, cone mid, cube high, and cube mid. So, and one of the great things about this arm is that inside of the tube we have chains that drive the elbow itself instead of it just being on the outside and exposed. Uh, we have a very large sprocket that controls the entire uh, shoulder and with Neos here that control the elbow and Neos down here which control the shoulder. 
How are you approaching your center of gravity on this robot here? You're extending out pretty far uh, in order to pick up and, and deliver game pieces for things. So when you're looking at CG, how are you keeping your robot nice and stable? Yeah, so one of the big things that we did up here is use pneumatic actuation instead of motors. One of the big reasons why we did that is because we knew that the arm was going to be extended out a lot. And so when the arm is extended out, center of gravity comes right about here. So instead of it being really heavy out here and, ended up, and ending up tipping, uh, we have pneumatic actuation up there, much lighter, much safer for every robot involved. Yeah, I love the overall design of this. It's been looking so good uh, throughout this event uh, and through the entire season as well, too. But there's a lot of code that goes into making this robot happen as well, too, uh, Miranda. So talk to me about, uh, you know, I know I see some LEDs for some driver feedback that looks really cool, but so just talk to me in general, a couple big highlights on this robot in terms of uh, programming. Okay, so... Our robot has four different ways it picks up game pieces. We have cone and cube from the floor, and we have cone and cube from the driver station, um, from the human player station. So we have different buttons for each of these. And um, so we know which uh, game piece we want when we're over in the driver station, and we have LED lights that light up for each button push that indicate which piece we want to our human player so they drop it in for us. So we have a cone intake that flashes yellow for the floor. We have a cube intake that flashes purple for a floor cube. And then we also have these um, ones from the human player station where we pick up directly from the human player station. So when I press a certain button, <laughs> uh, the robot will flash red. And we call this our angry cone. And it means that we want to pick up our uh, cone from the human player station. So we'll run this, and they'll just drop it right in. And then we also have one uh, for that flashes blue. And we call that our sad cube. And that indicates to our human player to drop in a cube directly into our robot from the single player station. Um, we also have a couple vision processing type systems. We have a limelight up here that we use for auto uh, seeing the April tags when we run our side autos to uh, kind of keep in track with our second game piece to grab. And we have um, a camera up here that's just for our driver uh, and operator to use to gauge whether they have a game piece or not. And um, our LEDs also flash green when we have a game piece uh, to indicate to our driver and operator when they have it and they can drive back. So there's a sensor in our intake up here that does that. And then our driver also has a button that goes rainbow mode. It's just kind of for fun when we do it in teleop um, uh, to show that we're balancing. But also when we're in auto, when it starts flashing rainbow, that indicates that we're balancing when we do our center uh, balancing auto. Well, I love all the thought process that goes into what Cybertooth is. Uh, your team just looking, you know, last few years, you just kind of just keep continually improving and looking better and better. So, uh, of course, we wish you best of luck here at Indiana DCMP. Uh, hopefully even further. We'll find out uh, in a little bit. But good luck the rest of the way, and thanks for uh, showing off your fantastic robot this year. <laughs> Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robotics Competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are First alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.